Hey everyone, I'm Alex, thanks for clicking, and welcome to this lesson on multi-word adjectives. So this is an advanced lesson where I will give you a ton of examples of multi-word adjectives and the contexts in which you can use them, as well as the structure, the grammatical structure, the grammatical pieces and parts of speech you need to form your own, um, you know, multi-word adjectives. Now, what's tricky about these is that you can't just take any words and mash them together. Um, unfortunately, you know, some words have gone together better than others. Um, so it is kind of an issue of memorizing things, but you can try to get creative. And after you watch the video, if you know any other multi-word adjectives, or if you want to experiment with the language and try to create your own, um, you can ask me in the comments or write me in the comments and um, let me know if you, you know, want to ask me if it's a multi-word adjective that exists, uh, or maybe it's something that's just fun and funny. So if you can make me laugh, that's even better. All right, so let's begin. What is a multi-word adjective? I think it's best if we just start looking at them and uh, look at the examples and you'll see what I mean. So the first way, I say first, but really any of these could be first. The first way I have listed on the board is you can have an adverb, add an ed participle or an ed adjective to create a new word, a new adjective. So for example, you can create words like well-developed, fully trained, highly skilled, okay? So um, a well-developed app or a well-developed program. So remember, adjectives are words which describe things. So ideally, after these adjectives, you should have some kind of noun. So what are some things that could be well-developed, so a well-developed app, a well-developed game, a well-developed program, okay? Fully trained, so a fully trained Marine, a fully trained police officer, someone who has received full training and is an expert in their field, okay? Highly skilled, someone who has a high degree of skill in their area, so you can be a highly skilled detective or um, a highly skilled um, doctor, a highly skilled surgeon, a highly skilled whatever profession you can think of that requires a high degree of skill. Next, you can take an adverb, add an ing participle or ing adjective, and you have words like hard working, fast, acting, well-paying. So um, a hard-working person, a fast-acting pain reliever, or a fast-acting medication. So if you have pain and you take medicine and the medicine acts very quickly, maybe in two minutes, oh, it works. It's fast-acting medication, okay? Well-paying. So you can have a well-paying job. The company pays you well. The job is well-paying. Um, you can also, hey, you can also use well-paid. So if the company pays you, you can say, you know, I am well-paid for my work. Um, I have a well-paying job, okay? Next, you can have a noun plus ed participle. You notice the pattern, right? You see. E-D-I-N-G, 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 E-D, noun, that's later. So a noun plus E-D participle, for example, money related, self-created, steel enforced. So um, if, you can, if you say, for example, you know, the country is experiencing some financial problems, they are having some money related issues. Uh, or maybe a city is having some crime-related problems. Or, hmm, this is an age-related issue, an issue related to age, or a problem related to money. 
uh, something like that. Self-created. So, um, you know, all your problems are self-created. So if you create problems for yourself, you are, you know, self-creating problems. So uh, your problems are self-created. Steel enforced. So uh, maybe this is at a, at a prison that has very heavy security and the walls are enforced with steel. So, um, you know, you cannot really break through them because they are enforced with steel. So steel enforced walls. Uh, next, we have a noun plus an ing participle. So you have words like fun-loving, award-winning, mind-altering. So uh, you can be a fun-loving person. If you love to have fun, you can say, you know, yeah, I'm a fun-loving person. Um, it's a weird thing to say about yourself, but about other people, you could say, yeah, she's a really fun-loving girl or he's a really fun-loving guy. Award-winning. Um, think of TV commercials of around like February or January uh, when Oscar season comes to Hollywood in the United States. And, you know, this is an award-winning movie, an award-winning performance. So a movie that has won an award, a performance or an actor that has won an award. He is an award-winning actor, an award-winning director, an award-winning uh, music album, okay? Mind altering. So if you have an experience that, whoa, changes your mind, it's a mind altering uh, experience. Um, we also talk about mind altering drugs in this scenario. So people who take drugs that mess with their brain chemistry or play with their uh, brain chemistry, you can say, yeah, he's into like mind altering drugs, uh, you know, drugs that affect the chemicals in his brain. So um, adjective plus ED participle. So you can have adjective, adjective. Like for example, blonde haired, brown eyed, three legged. Now you're thinking haired, eyed, legged? Yes. So if you want to talk about the physical characteristics of a person, you can give the adjective to describe the, the body part. Uh, so here we have colors, blonde, brown, we have a number three, and then we add ed to the body part. So a blonde haired girl, a brown eyed boy, a three legged dog, um, a one eyed person, person. Maybe they lost an eye in an accident. Uh, if someone has a big nose, you could say a big nosed whatever. Okay. So um, you can basically, you know, add, add an adjective plus the body part plus ED. And you can use that to describe the physical characteristics of a person. Uh, so next adjective plus ING participle. Some of these you might be familiar with, like good looking, a good looking person, a good looking guy, a good looking girl. Uh, we have foul smelling. So foul is another word for awful, horrible, terrible. Okay. So uh, a foul smelling <laughs> refrigerator. Maybe you open the refrigerator and it hasn't been opened in three months. <sighs> a foul smelling refrigerator, a foul smelling lunch or something like that. It smells really bad. Uh, free thinking. So a person who is a free thinker, who is open-minded. Here's another one for you. Open-minded, closed-minded. A free thinking person, a free thinking individual, a free thinking politician, um, a free thinking psychologist, whatever it is. Next, you can have numbers in these as well. So you saw one already with the uh, three-legged. So you can say a three-legged dog, for example. You can also have number plus ED participle. So we have one-eyed, three-fingered, two-faced. 
So again, a person with one eye, maybe they had an accident, okay? Um, think of a pirate, right? Pirates, uh, is stereotypically in fiction, they are depicted as having one eye with an eye patch. So they are one-eyed pirates. Uh, Three-fingered, so maybe a character in a movie, they lost two fingers, so uh, they have three fingers. If you remember The Fugitive, or if you remember more specifically, uh, was it Ace Ventura or The Mask, when uh, Jim Carrey makes fun of The Fugitive, and he says, it wasn't me, it was the one-armed man. Okay, so a one-armed person, a person with one arm. Uh, the one-armed man in the movie The Fugitive with Harrison Ford. Uh, Two-faced. Now, you might be thinking of, wait a minute, I saw The Dark Knight. I saw Harvey Dent when he became Two-Face in that movie. If you're not thinking that, that's okay. Um, so this has an idiomatic meaning. A person who is two-faced is duplicitous. Uh, you can also say they are deceitful. Um, they, you know, they're two-faced. They have two faces because sometimes they are happy and sometimes they're uh, angry. So to your face, maybe they're very kind, but behind your back, um, they are not very kind. So they have two faces. Uh, so, ah, that two-faced jerk, you can say. All right, you can also have a number plus a noun. So uh, this comes in very handy. This is very useful if you are talking about uh, stuff that in involves measurement. So here we have a two liter bottle. So if you have a bottle and it says 2L, yes, the bottle can store two liters. It is a two liter bottle. So uh, maybe some of you you run marathons, okay? And you say, hey, did you bring water? Yeah, I brought a one liter bottle or a 1.5 liter bottle of water, okay? A five story building. So um, a building with five stories. Now, what is a story? This is weird, right? So um, basically a story is a floor. Uh, this is very American. So uh, a five story building is a building with five floors. And then finally we have, uh, it's better if I go on this side, a three-year-old girl. I gave you a little bonus one with more than one um, hyphen in it. So a three-year-old girl, a girl who is three years old is a three-year-old girl. What is special about this category and what I want you to notice is it doesn't matter what the number is. Okay, it can be two, three, four, one, twelve, whatever. The noun you use is not plural. Okay, I know normally it's it should be like a bottle with two liters, right? Because two is plural. It should say liters. But when you use it in this way, when you use it like an adjective before the noun, um, the noun stays plural. So not a two liters bottle, but a two liter bottle. Um, it's not a five stories building, it's a five story building, okay? A three year, no S, a three year old girl. But yes, you do say, I am three years old, okay? But you don't say a three years old girl, you say a three year old girl here. <sighs> Are you confused yet? A little bit. That's, that's normal, it's okay. Like I said, it's an advanced lesson. Um, if you are a beginner student and you're wondering, what is this? What's going on? Get a taste, go back, look at some of the uh, beginner videos instead. Uh, if you are advanced, hopefully you're having fun and you're enjoying yourself and some of this stuff is uh, new for you and some of it is kind of familiar. So to finish, what I'm gonna do is look at some other common adjective phrases, uh, some multi-adjective uh, combinations, and um, I'll give you some context. So here we have, this is difficult here, we have things like full-time, right? A full-time job, okay? Part-time, a part-time job, right? Middle-aged, 
So uh, a person who is in their 40s, 50s, they're 45 years old or 50 years old, uh, they are middle-aged, a middle-aged man, a middle-aged woman, a middle-aged person, okay? Uh, next, we have power-hungry. So someone who is hungry for power, uh, we can say they are power-hungry. So a power-hungry politician, a power-hungry dictator. Um, Darth Vader in Star Wars was a power-hungry Sith Lord. Don't ask me what a Sith Lord is in the comments, okay? Watch Star Wars. It's only specific to Star Wars. All right, and uh, next we have right-leaning and left-leaning. Um, so this refers to your political affiliation, um, kind of which side of the political fence you are on. If you are a, okay, your left is this way, is that true? Yeah, so if you are a left-leaning person, it means you are more liberal, okay? If you are a right-leaning person, you are more conservative, okay? Uh, so to lean, if you're wondering, what is lean? To lean is to like move your body to one side like this or like that. You can lean back you can lean forward as well. So you can say, oh, my uncle is a right-leaning conservative. Uh, most of my family are left-leaning, okay? Next we have cold-hearted. So a person with a cold heart, a person who doesn't have compassion for other people, a person who lacks kindness. Um, so think of fictional characters. Like in Harry Potter, Lord Voldemort, you can say he is a cold-hearted villain. Um, again, I, I'm going back to politicians. Again, you can be a cold-hearted dictator, a cold-hearted totalitarian, um, a cold-hearted um, politician, basically. All right, next we have full length. So um, a full length film is usually the context we, we think of this in. So if you um, are asking a person, you know, if a person asks you to watch, a, watch something on TV or on Netflix or somewhere else online, and you say, wait, is it a TV show? Is it a, is it a mini series? Is it um, a short film? No, no, it's a full length movie, okay? A full length feature film, you can say as well. Okay, so it's uh, like, you know, typically a full-length movie is about at least 90 minutes to two hours and a half. And next we have three different things. Um, life, time, soul, sucking. Okay, now this doesn't mean life sucks, time sucks, your soul sucks, um, but a life-sucking job or a time-sucking task um, a soul-sucking job. So imagine like uh, an experience or a job that you feel uh, is taking the life out of you or is sucking the, your, the, your soul out of you uh, because you are working so hard, you don't like what you're doing. Um, this is soul-sucking work or uh, it's a time-sucking job or life-sucking task, okay? So it sucks the life out of you. It sucks your soul. It sucks your time, okay? Uh, life-changing, something that changes your life, a life-changing experience, a life-changing book. Um, I just read The Philosophies of Bruce Lee, and for me it was kind of a life-changing book because I had never read about uh, a lot of the philosophies that are in that book. It was awesome. So I really recommend The Philosophies of Bruce Lee, uh, the name of the book is The Warrior Within. Um, if you want the audio version, check out audible.com. There's a link in the description. Um, and finally, heart pounding. So think of your heart and pound, to pound is So if your heart is going really quickly, like boom, 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 boom. That's your heart is pounding. Um, this can be to talk about an experience, 
Maybe it's um, a horror movie that you're watching. So it was a heart-pounding movie, a heart-pounding roller coaster ride, um, a heart-pounding experience. Okay? It's a lot of stuff, right? So um, if you want to test your understanding and make sure that you got this, as always, you can check out the quiz on ingvid.com. Uh, you can also add me on Facebook. I have a fan page there. You can check me out on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And really, uh, leave me some comments and let me know if you understood the lesson. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about the lesson and see if you can create your own um, adjectives, okay? Your own multi-word adjectives. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't, okay? Some things go together better than others. It's like baking, right? You have to have your flour and your egg and your milk. And um, I don't know a lot about baking. I really don't. I can make cookies, that's it, okay? Anyway, uh, finally, if you wanna support what we do, if you think, wow, this was really cool. I learned a lot of new vocabulary. Alex, I want to give you some money. How do I pay you? Uh, you can do that on ingvid.com at the uh, support link, okay? And if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. I appreciate that you have made it this far into the video, and I wish you all the best of luck in your studies, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm going to go hunt some aliens with Samus.